All right, so this deep dive looks fascinating. Theology, IT, and now quantum computing. Arian Blau's career path is definitely anything but ordinary. I'm really interested to see how this all connects. Yeah, you know, we always talk about how a career isn't linear, and Arian's profile is the perfect example of that. Theology to quantum computing, that's quite a leap. Talk about a career pivot, right? So he starts out with roles at KPN, Innerstrom, and Gementi Ud I Jaisal Streak, typical IT support roles early on. Yeah, on the surface, they seem like standard starting points. But think about the skills he was developing even back then troubleshooting technical issues for people who might not be tech savvy at all. That requires patience, communication, the ability to explain complex things simply. Those are valuable skills no matter where your career takes you. It's like that saying, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. We often overlook the importance of those foundational experiences. Exactly. And you can see those skills coming into play later on, especially when he starts working with cloud technologies and has to explain these new concepts to clients but then he goes and does something really interesting heads off to south africa yeah that caught my eye too it's like okay we were just talking about it support and now we're off to a different continent right and it's not just a change of scenery he's running netshop eden working with handmade connections it's about building something from scratch navigating a completely different market that takes guts adaptability, and a whole lot of entrepreneurial spirit. And probably hone some serious remote management skills, too. Absolutely. Managing projects, teams, clients, all remotely. That experience becomes even more valuable later on. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about his return to the Netherlands. Because the journey doesn't end there. He's back in the Netherlands working at companies like Lesher IT, Alpha, and Eris, and Structum. And the technologies he's involved with, VMware, Digit Migrations, Linux, Cloud Technologies, it's clear he's not just fixing printers anymore. He's leveling up, taking on more responsibility, mastering more complex technologies. The projects are getting bigger. The stakes are higher. He's clearly not afraid of a challenge. And that seems to be a recurring theme throughout his career, always pushing himself to learn and grow. Which brings us to his, what did you call it? His cloud era. Yeah, the last decade or so at Switch Automatizing, Brian BV, and Brick CRM. This is where his expertise in cloud technologies really takes center stage, vCloud, AWS, hybrid cloud. He's mastering it all. It's like he saw the writing on the wall. The future's in the cloud, and he was ready for it. And remember that time in South Africa, managing everything remotely? That experience would have given him a real advantage when it came to understanding and working with cloud-based systems. It all connects. But wait, there's more. He doesn't just stop at mastering the cloud. Enter the Remin Q in the world of quantum computing. Now that's what I call thinking outside the box. It's mind blowing, right? Mm -hmm. From theology to IT to quantum computing. It's the ultimate testament to the power of transferable skills and a willingness to embrace the unfamiliar. Okay, so we've got this fascinating intersection of Arian's background and this cutting edge field. But before we dive deeper into Theremin Q, I think we need to break down quantum computing itself. Quantum computing, for a lot of us, it sounds like something out of Star Trek. Could you break it down for us? What exactly is it? Well, imagine a computer that can solve problems that would take a classical computer, even the most powerful ones, billions of years to solve. Okay, that sounds pretty powerful. So, uh, but how does it actually work? Is it like regular computers, just, you know, a lot faster? Not exactly. Quantum computers use the principles of quantum mechanics, which govern the behavior of particles at the atomic and subatomic level. Okay, so we're talking about a whole different level of computing here. Exactly. Instead of bits, which can be either a zero or a one, quantum computers use qubits. Qubits can be a zero, a one, or both at the same time. This is called superposition. Whoa, both at the same time. That's where it starts to sound like science fiction to me. It's mind bending for sure. And this both at the same time thing is key to the power of quantum computing. It allows them to perform calculations in parallel, exploring many possibilities simultaneously. So it's like having a massive team of computers working on the same problem at once. You could say that, Hold but down. even that analogy doesn't quite capture the full potential. It's not just about speed, it's about tackling problems that are fundamentally impossible for classical computers to solve. Okay, I'm starting to grasp the immense possibilities here. But where does Theremin Q fit into all of this? That's a great question. Theremin Q is all about making this incredible power accessible. Accessible. Because right now, it sounds like you'd need a PhD in quantum physics just to get started. 
You're not wrong. Programming quantum computers is incredibly complex. Their MinQ acts as a bridge, providing a suite of tools that make it easier for developers and researchers to interact with these quantum systems. So it's like a user-friendly interface for quantum computing. Exactly. It simplifies the process of writing quantum algorithms, which are the instructions that tell the quantum computer what to do. Plus, it helps with visualizing and analyzing the results, which can be pretty mind-boggling. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But managing these quantum computers, even with their MinQ, must still be incredibly complex, right? Absolutely. We're talking about incredibly sensitive machines that need to be kept at ultra-low temperatures, shielded from the slightest interference. And then there's the challenge of integrating them with existing IT infrastructure. It's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Except the square peg is made of super-cooled lasers, and the round hole is your office server room. A very advanced, delicate square peg. And that's where Arian's experience in IT infrastructure, cloud computing, and managing complex systems becomes incredibly valuable. So he's not just building a software platform, he's building the entire ecosystem around it. Exactly. What? And this is where his concept of Quanto PS comes in. It's about establishing best practices, tools, and processes for managing quantum computing workloads at scale. Quanto PS DevOps for the quantum age. I like it. <laughs> but it's not just about managing the hardware, is it? We also have to talk about AI and how it plays into all of this. Ah, yes. AI, specifically large language models, are becoming increasingly important in quantum computing. Okay, I have to admit, we're starting to lose me a little bit here. AI, quantum computers. It's a lot to take in. I hear you. It's a lot to wrap your head around. But think of it this way. LLMs can be used to help write those complex quantum algorithms we were talking about. So the AI is assisting in writing the instructions for the quantum computer. Exactly. It's like having a super-powered assistant that can help researchers and developers unlock the full potential of these machines. That's incredible. But these powerful technologies, AI and quantum computing, they need serious computing power, right? Absolutely. And that's where GPUs and QPUs come into play. Okay, more acronyms. What are those? GPUs, or graphics processing units, are already widely used in AI. They're great at handling the massive parallel processing that AI algorithms require. QPUs, or quantum processing units, are specifically designed to run quantum algorithms. So Arian and his team are working on integrating all of these different processing units, uh -huh. GPUs, QPUs, the whole shebang, to create a hybrid computing ecosystem. Precisely. And this is where his experience managing large-scale IT environments from traditional data centers to cloud deployments becomes crucial. He understands how to build and manage these complex systems, ensuring they operate at peak performance. It's mind-blowing to think about. We've gone from fixing desktops to potentially revolutionizing entire industries with quantum computing. It's a lot to process, to be honest. It is. But at its core, it's a story about human ingenuity, adaptability, and the willingness to embrace the unknown. And that's something we can all learn from, regardless of our career paths. But speaking of career paths, as quantum computing becomes more mainstream, what does that mean for the workforce? What skills will be in high demand? So it's not just about the technology itself. It's about how this technology is going to reshape the way we work, the skills we need to thrive. It's kind of daunting when you think about it. It is a bit like staring into a fog, right? We can sense the immense changes coming, but the specifics are still hazy. Exactly. So how do we even begin to prepare for that? Should we all be signing up for Quantum Physics 101? Well, a basic understanding of the principles is definitely helpful. But I wouldn't say everyone needs to become a quantum physicist overnight. What's more important, I think, is cultivating that same adaptability and curiosity that Arian has demonstrated throughout his career. So instead of trying to predict the exact skills that'll be needed, we should be focusing on becoming lifelong learners, comfortable with adapting to whatever comes our way. You got it. The one constant in technology is change. The skills that are in high demand today might be obsolete tomorrow. What's going to set you apart is the ability to learn, to adapt, and to connect seemingly disparate ideas. It's like that saying, the only true security is insecurity. Or maybe a better way to put it is the only true security is adaptability. Exactly. And this is where Arian's story really resonates. He's constantly pushing himself outside his comfort zone, embracing new challenges, and weaving together seemingly unrelated experiences into a unique and incredibly valuable skill set. You called it polyskilling earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Like a Renaissance person, but for the digital age. Exactly. Think Leonardo da Vinci, but instead of painting the Mona Lisa, he's writing quantum algorithms. Okay, that's visual I won't soon forget. But on a more practical level, 
How do we cultivate this polyskilling in ourselves? It starts with a commitment to continuous learning. And I'm not just talking about formal education. It's about actively seeking out new information, new perspectives, new ways of thinking, read widely, take online courses, attend workshops, follow experts in different fields. Just be insatiably curious. So be an explorer. Chart your own course through the vast sea of knowledge. I love it. And remember, exploration isn't always comfortable. Be willing to be a beginner again, to embrace those initial feelings of being overwhelmed or out of your depth. That's where the real growth happens. That's a great point. So often we shy away from things we're not already good at. But true learning, true innovation happens when we step outside our comfort zones. Absolutely. Arian's journey is a testament to that. He didn't shy away from challenges, and as a result, he's found himself at the forefront of one of the most exciting and potentially transformative technologies of our time. It's inspiring, to say the least. Oh. So to our listeners out there, I think the message is clear. Embrace curiosity. Never stop learning. And who knows? You might just surprise yourself with where you end up. Thanks for joining us for this incredible deep dive. Until next time.